Revelation chapter 11 and Daniel 11. The Bible says in the last days there will be doctrines of devils, 1 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 says that we are not ignorant of Satan's devices. It's important to know that in the last days, we are not to be ignorant of what Satan's doing upon our world. Now, how many of you have heard the news about this yet? So I don't know if any of you heard the news about this yet, about this bill. But I noticed that the mainstream media, they're not uh, posting a lot of attention on this one, actually. Because the reason why is whenever uh, it comes to a Christian moment, then they tend to be a little bit more silent. But it, when it comes to the liberals moment, that's where they really go like two weeks long on two people who got shot, something like that. See, that's what people do. Michael Jackson, as soon as he passed away, I was just so sick and tired. They were going on for like two months almost. I was like, can we start talking about something else, please? So this bill, 2943, what this bill is, is basically it's uh, forbidding the advertising, offering to engage in, or engaging in sexual orientation change efforts. They're going to put this in the list of fraudulent business practices that are already banned in California. The man, okay, the man who really pushed this bill, unfortunately, he was born in our city, San Jose. <laughs> So this is around Silicon Valley area. The title of the article is California Lawmakers Considered Bill That Treats Conversion Therapy Like Consumer Fraud. Written by uh, Carol Kuruvilla at the Huff Post, April 20th, 2018, 2.34 p.m. Quote, the State Assembly passed Bill 2943 on Thursday. The legislation which targets the practice of trying to change a person's sexual orientation. Now heads... <clears throat> to the state senate. If enacted, the bill would make advertising, offering to engage in, or engaging in sexual orientation change efforts to the list of fraudulent business practices already banned in California. Now, a lot of Christians are voicing their uh, are voicing out their opinion against this. The famous one, CBN, they already wrote articles about that, and the Republicans also voiced their concern. Several Republican assembly members were concerned that the bill would infringe upon the right to freedom of religion. They cited the ability of churches to sell books about conversion therapy, for example, or invite a therapist <coughs> to speak about the subject at a church event. So what the Christians are concerned about is this. I don't know how many of you have heard about this recent news about banning the Bibles. So how this tied to this bill is this. What they're concerned about in Bill 2943 is anything that uh, concerns with selling, selling or getting paid for talking about sexual orientation changes. So then the Bibles, right, the bookstores that are selling Bibles, it talks about homosexuality being a sin. And then also we use the Bible to show what we can do to conquer sins like marijuana, alcohol, homosexuality, pornography, etc., right? So what the Christians are concerned about is that because Bibles are being sold and that because it proclaims these verses, I mean, they're very ugly verses on homosexuality, right, in the Bible. And I think all the homosexuals know which verses they are, too. Romans 1 is infamous. The book of Leviticus is infamous. Romans 7 and Romans 6 are very popular verses about how to conquer sin and addictions. So what the Christians are concerned about is, <clears throat> so then selling Bibles, that will be banned now. Because why? It's talking about this kind of subject. So then you got some of these liberals. Here's a Democrat, Assemblywoman Susan Talamantes Eggman. <laughs> nice last name. But anyway... Uh, <laughs> Eggman, E-G-G-M-A-N, literally, yeah. I never saw that before. It's unique. Okay, but anyways, uh, anyways, uh, the quote she said was this. You can still try to pray the gay away if you'd like, but it hasn't proved to be effective. That's what she stated. Now, the thing is this, is that uh, I've had 
homo- I've encountered some homosexuals in our church before, and especially online. I was very surprised. But you've got to realize this. There are people out there, and I've met other Bible-believing churches who had homosexuals, I've met those kind of people, I've seen those kind of people before, talked to those kind of people, and they proclaimed, and I'm going to give a testimony someday, I, Brother Tom knows, but one day when we don't have missionary letters to read, I'm going to read these testimonies of many people who got saved, changed, converted to King James only dispensationalism, and some of them included homosexuals, you'd be surprised actually. So the, so the Bible proclaims and preaches the victory, amen, on any kind of sin amen. out there. So thank God that, man, aren't you glad that God can use anybody, and I even yes, mean anybody, sir. a murderer, he can use a murderer, he can use a thief, he can use a sexual pervert, he can use a homosexual, he can use a person who is a drug addict, That's he right. can use a, a dope fiend, he can use any, he can use a hell's angel, a convict, he can use anybody for his honor and glory, amen. So we thank God for that. But the thing is, see, when, by proclaiming all this stuff, what's going to happen to those kind of preachers proclaiming this? And then these people, they try to spout out that those things do not work. Really? Look at some of the testimonies of some of these people who had the victory. Now, of course, there are people who fell prey into sin, and some people sadly did not get the victory. There are some of them who are still struggling out there. But I'm going to tell you something. That book is still alive, Romans 7 and 8. And let me tell you something, that there are people who did get the victory. We had a heroin addict. And this heroin addict, he got the victory. He don't do it anymore. We had one who was passing out tracts about homosexuality. And that person was a former homosexual too. So that person, he was actually passing them out. And sadly, the, they, they arrested him for doing that, actually. But that, so I met those kind of people. They had the victory. They proclaimed it before. So the Bible, you got to realize this. There's always hope when you're in the Word of God. Amen. There's always hope out there. So you can pray the thing away, but it hasn't proved to be effective. Tell it to those people whose lives got transformed by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, so the person who pushed the bill, his name is Evan Lowe. He proclaimed this. There is nothing wrong with me. There is nothing that needs to be changed. So you see the heart is revealed why they would push this kind of matter. See, It's by what? Rejecting the word of God and sticking on to what they want to do instead. Now here's the relief. So everyone's panicking about this. Now I have some members who specialized in legal matters. Okay, So I consulted with them, tried to find out the whole detail. So I'm going to give a relieving point, but I'm also going to give a not-so-relieving point. It's not so relieving as you think. The relieving point is this. Quote, the article says, Lowe said that the bill is limited to conversion therapy offered as a service in exchange for monetary compensation. He said it would not prevent people from speaking or writing on the subject, and it would not apply to the sale of books. So that's, that's your relieving point. So at least we can still preach, proclaim, and then sell Bibles, etc. However, the thing is this. The thing is, is that it's not going to be so relieving because how much closer are we? Think about this, church. In this kind of, has this kind of bill ever been pushed before throughout all this time? And you've got to realize this. The Bible says that as the apostasy gets worse and worse, it's going to get worse and worse, right? And then at its worst is going to be what? The tribulation. They might not charge us or arrest us or persecute us for standing for the word of God and preaching against homosexuality. But here's the thing. This is another stepping stone where it's closer to that. And guess what? It will happen. You know, it, I, it doesn't matter what they say that it's not going to happen. It will happen. You know why? Because the Bible says, go to Revelation 11 and Daniel 11. What is the Antichrist, right? He has, he has no desire for women. He's a homosexual. Look at Daniel chapter 11. Daniel chapter 11. We're going to look at verse 37. Daniel chapter 11. And we will read verse 37. You got to realize this, the one world ruler, the Antichrist, 
and he can pass any bill, you gotta understand. This Antichrist, he, can, he is a homosexual. So whether he's going to identify himself as that or he has homosexual desires, we don't know. But all we do know is this, is that he has homosexual tendencies. We're going to look at Daniel chapter 11 and verse 37. Neither shall he, the Antichrist, regard the God of his fathers, so he completely rejects the Bible, Christianity, nor what the desire of women, nor regard any God, for he shall magnify himself above all. So he has no desire of women. Now, if you compare that with Romans chapter 1, Romans 1 shows it is a natural desire for the opposite sex. But that natural desire is corrupted through homosexual tendencies. So there's no doubt when you compare Romans 1, Daniel 11, that this is showing the Antichrist, he has homosexual tendencies. And what will the Antichrist do with the saints of God? He will what? Persecute them. He's not just going to charge them. He's going to persecute and kill them. And the headquarters where they kill Christians, what is it called? Go to Revelation 11. Revelation chapter 11. Look at Revelation chapter 11. The headquarters where he executes all these people, where he's honored as God. What's it called? Sodom and Egypt. Look at Revelation chapter 11. And we will read verse 8. And their dead bodies, so the bodies that the Antichrist executed, shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called, see there's some unclean spirit in that city there. Yeah. This spirit of Sodom, see? What was the spirit of Sodom back at Genesis? Which is spiritually is called what? Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. You know what's also interesting? So we know this to be Jerusalem, because it says where our Lord was crucified, right? I don't know if you knew this, but didn't you know Jerusalem had one of the biggest parades of homosexuality and liberalism? I don't know if you knew that. See, this thing is going to be pushed, man. This is going to be pushed. Sure, we might be relieved right now, okay? But do you know how close we are till this thing happens? You know what I believe? I believe it's very possible persecution can happen before the rapture can start, before the tribulation can start. It can happen. I mean, when you look at the current events in the news, it's scary what they're pushing, what they're pushing. And they try to give these relieving moments. Oh, we're not saying that we're going to do this or do that. But you know what? The bi when you look, when you study history and current events, you realize we're getting even closer and closer to the persecution. But not only that, we know because the Bible says so there will be persecution. That's why we know it will happen eventually. They might say, oh, Hosanna to the highest to Jesus, but the very next days, they're going to, what did they say? Crucify to Jesus. See, people are very fickle, you got to understand. They might think they might not do it, but then that negative, wicked spirit can come out within a few short time period. It's very possible. You know what's also interesting about this uh, person? So I looked up this person who pushed the bill. What's pretty interesting is this. So we know the Antichrist will have homosexual tendencies. The person who wrote this is Marin Kogan at the New York Mag, February 25, 2016. The title of the article is this. Is there a next Obama on the Democratic Party bench? You know who's one of the potential candidates they put for 2024? 2024 is the big date. The big date they're going to put. 2024 is the big date that they predict would happen. One of the best potential candidates they said was that guy who pushed the bill, Evan Lowe. They have it right here, quote, potential U.S. candidate by 2024. Uh, Evan Lowe, age in November 2024, 41. When he was chosen by Campbell, California at age 26, Lowe became both the youngest gay mayor and youngest Asian American mayor in the country, the whole United States. Quote, I recall the time, so this is Lowe speaking, I recall the time I received a letter from the Red Cross. It was a challenge asking mayors in the region to host blood drives, he says. 
as a gay man, he wasn't allowed to participate. But he is responsible. Remember that petition that came out where it doesn't discriminate concerning the blood drives? He is responsible for the petition that eventually led the FDA to lift its bans. After two terms, he jumped to the California State Assembly. Look out, see, it's coming even closer and closer what the Bible predicted what's going to happen. Now the thing is this, is that I really don't think that, I'm not saying, and I highly doubt he's the Antichrist, because remember, the Antichrist meets all three races. He's got to be a Syrian Jew. But you've got to realize this, if, the, if a person like that was given so much prestige within a short amount of time, what do you think the Antichrist would do? How close are we? See? And how much will the world follow after that? Even so, come Lord Jesus, amen.